to feel the love of your embrace. Help me find the way, bring me back to you. Father God, we're so thankful that you are right here, that you are that near. So Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and all of the glory for it this morning now. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. We'll get everybody a good hand knock here this morning. Share the love of God up and down the road this morning. Amen, amen, amen. your uh, phones check in on Facebook let everybody know that you're here this morning I want to continue to pray for Robert and Brian on uh, their way back uh, from I guess they're, uh, they're kind of on their turnabout and coming back on the way down back southbound. they're southbound how long it'll take them to get back from Alaska I, I don't know but we'll we'll see them shortly uh, we want to pray corporately this morning for Pastor Kathy. She is still running a, about a hundred degree temperature. They cannot figure out what this thing is. Uh, they don't. She's been under antibiotics. It still hasn't helped. She's going to see another doctor on Thursday. So uh, please keep her in your prayers this morning, as we uh, continue this morning's worship service this morning. It's always good to know that people are praying for you. And I'm going to give a good report for Brian this morning. Brian Perry called me last night. Uh, he wanted to know, is it too late to talk? It was about 10.30. I said, no, it's not too late to talk. And he wanted me to tell you that he feels like he is finally at a place where God has blessed him. Uh, those of you that know, he was uh, Mater D at uh, Morton's for, I don't know how many years, four, five, six years, like seven years? Has it been seven? Is it, what? 11. 
11. 11 years. I didn't realize it had been that long. It had been a while. And, you know, we're going to talk about honoring today. That's one of the virtues we're going to talk about this morning. But they have not honored him. But God has honored him and delivered him <laughs> from a place that did not care, took advantage of him, right and left his good nature and everything like that. The manager before him took advantage of him. This manager's taking advantage of him because of nepotism involved in the, in the workings of that organization. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. We thought one door was open and it was just instantly just nothing happened, and suddenly God opened a door for him at True Lux, and now he's the GM at True Lux. He's going to be right over here on McKinney, and he is still in uh, training. Uh, he was in the Woodlands this week, and you got to go see him, which I thought was really good. And you took him Roxy, which was sweet. Took him a puppy to go see, and then he is at another True Lux in River Oaks. If you know Houston, that's a, the the nice part of town. So we're all happy for him, and he'll be back uh, this next week. So. Just continue to pray for him because I know that he and Jose like being together, but it's, it's just one more week. and He'll be a few days. He'll, he'll be back. But uh, he actually had two days off while he was down there. Yeah. He has normally had to work every holiday week. and holiday weekends. Yeah. And because the gym says, oh, no, I'm not working this weekend and would leave it for him. And he was actually off. And so when uh, Jose was down there, they were off and it was fun. It was so, it was so, so good. I'm so happy for him. Very, very happy. But I want us to thank the Lord, you know what, that we have an opportunity to give and to worship the Lord with our giving. And you know, we give on an app called Giveify. So if, you're not, if you've not done that, that's something that always is good to look up. Givelify, and when you do that, it'll ask you for the church name, and you're here, and it'll give you a pop it right up. And when you do that, you can give as much as you'd like. And we just really appreciated everybody and their support taking care of the things that go on here, and it's always, always, always good. We appreciate it so much. And just to let you know, Jeff and I are leaving today. Right after service, we're going to go on a vacation for a week. Uh, we haven't, I mean, we've been to Houston once in about a year, <laughs> and we all know what that's like. We're all ready to go and can hardly wait. Uh, I finished my job on Friday. Thank God, and uh, yeah, uh, I actually finished the job, and they told us on Friday in our separation letter that our bonus would be paid on October the 8th, so I get that too, so was, I finished. Jeff was really kind of amazed. He says, I'm surprised that you did it because it was not the job that they had hired me for, but uh, in order to get the bonus, you have to complete it, and I said, I not, have not waited this long to not get that, so. All of that is good news, and Jeff is so ready because his people have not taken care of that store, and he says, you know what, we're going to let them take care of that store while I'm gone. So we leave today. We'll be back a week from tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. Uh, and here's the scoop for next Sunday. Our bright and shining man over here in the right-hand corner, Keith Harrison will be speaking if Pastor Wayne is not here. Uh, he got COVID after two uh, shots, vaxxed twice and still ended up with it, but he got the uh, antibodies, but I've not heard if he's going to be able to be here on Sunday or not, so he will be uh, speaking and singing if he's here, and if not, Doug will be leading and Keith will be speaking, so be sure to be here next Sunday. Hope everybody's back. Uh, I have a new start on a new series today, and I uh, I'll tell you something. If you've ever been in a uh, situation, we are in uh, what I would call the age of perpetual offense. Uh, everybody is offended. You know, uh, they're quick to judge, quick to criticize, quick, quick to condemn, and they cancel anybody that they don't like. And I don't know, I, when I first started heard, heard the words cancel culture, I didn't know what they were talking about. But the more you heard it, the more you realized exactly what they were doing. Politicians, athletes, business leaders, celebrities, and including spiritual leaders of this country 
have all suffered from what we call cancel culture. If you don't like what they say, you just write them off and we don't listen to those people anymore. Uh, school teachers, especially today, all the COVID talk, all of a sudden nobody has any credibility because we just don't believe in what they say. And so what I wanna talk about the next few weeks, my next Sunday, is about true virtues. And the one I wanna to talk today about is about honor. So my, my opening statement thought here today is we're gonna talk about honor today. Next Sunday we're gonna talk about, or two weeks from today, we'll talk about integrity. And I'll tell you, it's hard to find people of integrity today, people who will say and do what they say they will do. Uh, we're gonna talk about perseverance. I believe that that's a, a virtue because people, it's like, I did not want to, I did not want to do this job. They hired me to do one thing, the description was great, also wonderful, and then two weeks into it, oh, we're not gonna do that anymore. And I'm going like, but this is what you said. Perseverance, integrity, honor, and then the last one we'll talk about is gratitude. But I, today I wanna talk about this cultural issue right here, and the fact that you know we want to honor, learn how to honor people and there are four things we're gonna talk about today, but we're gonna learn how to honor in a cancel culture. And what I'll tell anybody right now is if you're in search of it, if you're on a continuous search to be offended, I guarantee you, you don't have to look very far and you will always find it. I know today in our society that there are a lot of people that just wait for somebody to say something wrong so that they can speak ill of them. Now I'll tell you something, I have not always agreed with every politician that we have had. I've had some problems with, from state level all the way up to the President of the United States. But I've never dishonored them because of the position that they hold. I respect and honor the position, but I don't always agree with what they've said or what they've done. So what we wanna to do today is we wanna talk about this issue, and it's found here in Romans tw chapter 12, verse 10. It says, honor one another, next word, above what? Yourself. Above yourself. And I promise you, if you will do that, if you will just do this one thing, you will find that God will open more doors for you than anything else. If you'll take the time to find something that's worth honorable about someone else, I promise you the doors will open that you might never have thought about before. Because if we learn to honor each other, take care of each other, respect each other, you'll find yourself, and I'm gonna go ahead and say this now, there are a lot of people that I've met in my lifetime that were not honorable men. They were not. But when you honor them, and you continually honor them, it causes them to raise their own level. They grow into that. You begin to speak things, not like they are, but as you want them to be as you want them to be, and people will live up to that, live up to that honor. So I want us to read here in Matthew chapter six, Mark chapter six here, it says, Jesus left that part of the country and returned to his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. So he wasn't, where was, first off, where was he born? Where was Jesus born? Born in Bethlehem. So he's not going to his birth hometown, but this is where he was raised, in Nazareth, his hometown. And the next Sabbath he began teaching in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. They were amazed at what he said. And they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Jesus came in and started doing miracles. But then what did the people do? Then they what? They scoffed at him. Why did they scoff at Jesus? Here's the thing. He is just a carpenter. 
He is just a carpenter. He's the son of Mary and the brother of James, jo Joseph, Judas, and Simon. His sisters lived right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told him, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. I think it's real interesting. You know, when you begin to do something that might be, I mean, outstanding, the people that are the closest to you discount that the most. Because, who are you? I know you. I, I, I remember you were, in, you were the little kid when you were growing up and you, ah, uh, you can't do anything. And that's what they were talking about here. They were talking about Jesus. They knew him. They probably said, you know what? Oh, I, I've got that dinner table that he made for you. You know, that you sold at auction. I, I remember that. That's that table that Jesus made. He and Joseph made that. Oh yeah, he was that little runny little guy that was running around when he was a kid. Yeah, I, I remember him. He can't do much. They were talking about the fact in dishonoring him. And I want you to remember that because we're going to come back to this verse in just a moment. Without honor. I want to take a look at this word. Without honor. Atomos is to dishonor or to treat as common or ordinary. What were they doing? They were taking the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, the line of the tribe of Judah, and they were discounting him because what they thought about him. What they thought about Jesus, that they were bringing him down, bringing him down. I knew him, I knew him, I knew him, I knew him. You know, when I think about that in the LGBT community, and I think about the fact that, you know what, uh, oh, you can't be a Christian because I know you because you're gay. Instantly, they begin to think that you can't be anything because of who you are, because they, in their own right, they're in their own mind's eye, begin to see you less than you really are. And I got, the, the ending of this message today, I hope will bring a lot of help to you to realize that you have a worth beyond, beyond your wildest dreams or imagination. But Jesus here is having to deal with dishonor because this atomos, he was without honor. He was without honor. Now, honor is something different because that's what we want to learn about. We want to learn about honor. So honor here says, time, not the word time, time, is to value or to respect, to highly esteem, to treat as precious, weighty, or valuable. God treats you this way. Your Heavenly Father treats you with honor. If we will learn to honor other people, even though they're just a politician, or if they're just a movie star, or if they're just, 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 we should never use that word just about anybody, because that's man's level. We've got to learn to see from God's level. So what does honor do? Honor esteems. Honor brings you up. Honor, when you honor somebody, you are bringing them to a whole different level. You're putting them up where they are respected, where they are honored, where they are of a position of value. They have a weight. When you dishonor, you take all of that away from them. All the things that they're good for, all the things that they have a promise, all the good things we take and treat as common. We tear down, we devalue when we dishonor someone. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, when my former wife and I were just getting together, we were just, just starting to date. And you could even pull this into LGBT world too. When, when you started taking Kathy out, you probably opened the door for her, you bought nice things for her, you bought nice gifts for her, and we did all those things. I wanted to take Jeff to nice places. The very first place I think I took Jeff was to Hawaii. We went to Hawaii together right when we first met. I wanted to do nice things for him because I was attracted to him. I wanted to be with him. I wanted to be with Joan. And we did all these nice things for them. When you first start courting somebody, you do really, really nice things for them. You call them on the phone. You give her cards. You give them nice things. You 
take them to nice places, nice dinners, and all that kind of thing. The problem with most relationships is they slowly become common. And we slowly begin to take that other individual for granted. And the things that we used to do when we were honoring them, when we were wanting to be with them, suddenly we stop doing those things because they've become common, dishonored, dishonored. Because over time, people settled back and settle into, and we don't have to do all that work anymore. That's the reason why I tell people <laughs> all the time that when they're working out, working out, working out before they go and they start dating somebody, I said, no, whatever you keep, whatever you start with, you want to keep that up. <laughs> Because that's what they're wanting to marry. That's what they're wanting to be with. That's who, the, that, that's who that person is that they want to be with. They want to be with that person right there. So when we stop doing all of those things later down the line, we're showing now dishonor. We're not honoring them. We're not honoring their choice that they made when they first got together. The other day, I was having a bad day on the phones. And Jeff called and said, uh, what day are we getting back? And I'm going like, the day has never changed in my head. It's always been eight days. We're leaving today, we come back on Monday. And I was really short with him on the phone. And I had to apologize, didn't I? Because I realized that I had cut him off and I was really short with him and I was not honoring him and I was not doing the things that I want to do for him. In relationships, you've got to remind yourself, I want to honor this person more than because they're with me, but because they're do that, because they're with me. I realized that, you know what? I'm 40 years older than he is, 40 plus some. And I'm sitting there thinking, he could be with anybody he wanted to be with, but he chose me. I want to honor him for that. He's going to keep me young and around for another 40 years maybe, I don't know. But the whole point is, is that when we take for granted and we treat as common, we show dishonor in our relationships. And it's not just in, in partnerships or marriage or relationships, it's in every area of our life. We begin to take and take something that is extraordinary and begin to treat them as common. You know, if you want a special relationship, you want a special marriage, you want a special partnership with somebody, honor them. Honor them. They're putting up with you. <laughs> That's why I honor you. <laughs> so I tell everybody, respect is earned, but honor is given. You know, you earn someone's respect because of the things you do for them, the, how you treat them. That's respect. But you honor someone because you are freely giving them a lift in life. You're giving them that place. You know, in this text where we just read, Jesus was being scoffed at. You just have to realize he had just healed a woman who had been sick, and he had just raised a little girl from the dead. <laughs> oh, but Seth said they were looking for the Messiah. They wanted to find the Messiah, and here he is in their midst, and he's doing these kinds of miracles, healing somebody that had been sick for 12 years, raising a little girl from the dead right here, right before their very eyes, and they're saying, oh, he's that little carpenter boy. You know, we're still looking. We're still looking, because it's got to be somebody really miraculous right there in their midst. See, sometimes we have people who are so honorable in our midst, and we don't treat them that way, because we discount who they are. We discount them. So who do we honor? You know, we are called to honor four different groups of people. We are called to honor them. The first one, we're to honor God. You know, over here in Proverbs chapter 3, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all your crops. Now, you know, it talks about giving. 
but we honor someone by paying them and honoring them with our substance. We honor them with who we are. We honor with them with the way we treat them. We honor them with our own respect and our kindness towards them. God says, you honor me by showing up and giving. That's what he says. Just of your whole wealth, you know, your first fruits, your body, your worship. You know, when we come to church, we're honoring him by showing up. I know a lot of people, you know, uh, they were talking about, uh, matter of fact, it made the national news about, who else did it make? It made uh, Bill Maher. <laughs> A week ago, Saturday, a week ago, Friday night, even Bill Maher had a guy on from, from some religious group. And it, they have this love-hate relationship between these two, and they're always on there together. And uh, this guy was talking about how much the percentage of churches have declined since the pandemic, and that they're not coming back, that they're not coming back. And Bill Maher said, well, you know, that's okay with me. And the other guy said, well, you know, what it just shows is that you take people away from church and they forget not only that it's good to come together, but that they're, they're forgetting that the reason why they come together is because they're showing honor to God. It's the showing up. It's the showing up. We remind ourselves that we are putting God first place by just showing up. Another thing we honor, we honor our parents. I don't know about you, but I heard this scripture probably <laughs> at least once a week <laughs> from my mother. You know, honor your father and your mother so that, you're, that you may have a long life. So my mom said, you want to live long? Honor me. You want to live long? You want a short life? I was wondering, are you going to shorten my life for me? Are you going to take me out back? What are you going to do? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, sir. no, the whole point is, is that we honor those people and we show honor to them because they are do that honor. They are our parents. They are our parents. You know, it's like I said before over here in Romans, you know, another thing that we honor, we honor those in authority. I know it's not always easy. You know, I would never, you couldn't pay me enough to be president because you never hardly do anything right. I mean, there's going to be somebody that picks a fight with you. Our current president just ended the longest war that our country has been involved in. Trillions of dollars. And it's still not right. Now, I don't know. Some of you were not around when the Vietnam War ended. Doug and I are probably the only two here around, very many of them. But the whole point is, the whole point is, is that it would have still been going on, still would have been going on, and this war would still be going on because the war machine wants it to go on. We, people want us spending that money. People want us spending that money because it puts money into the pockets of the war machine. But somebody had to do it, and people don't like that. People don't like it. But we still honor the man who takes on the role, the responsibility, and the leadership of a country. We still do that. We still do that in the state of Texas. May not agree, don't often agree, but the position is do our prayer, our respect, and our honor. Don't like it. It says right here in Romans 3, this isn't all of it, you can look at all of it. It says, but let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Sometimes God puts people into, into office just to get the people riled up to pray that we'll get a better person. You know, sometimes you just sit back and I like this, I like this, it's no big challenge, don't, no big work, I don't have to do anything here. And we just allow our lives to roll on and we're not actively engaged. God sometimes brings somebody into the camp that stirs up the nest to make everybody come back together again. So we've got to have that responsibility to pray for those people and honor them because they have been placed there by God. Who can tell me the last one that I'm going to talk about? Anybody know? 
you're not going to like this. You might think this is self-serving, but you're, honor, you're supposed to honor your pastors and spiritual leaders. I'm glad that we do here. But it's found over here in 1 Timothy 5, 17. The elders of the church are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. That's the reason why you need to be praying for Pastor Kathy. You need to be thanking God for her and raising her up and getting her whole. You need to be praying for Pastor Wayne. You need to be praying for him. You need to be praying for me. I'm still here. I'm still here. But what does it matter? Why, why, why does honoring matter? Why does honoring someone matter? Because it builds them up. We're all about supposed to be edifying each other, building each, up, each other up in this holy faith is what Paul says in Ephesians, building each other up. My job is to remind you that, you know what? You are a child of God just the way you are. You don't have to change for anything because God loves you. God made you. You are the man and the woman that God designed you to be. And the other people that just say, well, they're just this or they're just that are trying to discount. And i got news for you. One day they're going to get a big backhand from God. I don't know about you, but when I sat in my back seat of my mom and dad's car and I said something, how many of you ever got that whap like that? I mean, it was amazing. They could find your face in the back seat and never look in the rearview mirror. Don't you say that, whack. They're gonna get some back hands of God sometime because that is dishonoring his own creation. We are his creation. And to discount that is wrong. That's the reason why we should not do it either. But I want us to take a look back over here at Mark chapter six again. Jesus said to them, these people that were around that scoffed at him and said that they were looking for the Messiah, he says, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. Look what it says here. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. Now I've got news for you. The reason why people are not healed today. When people are sick is because they don't believe God can still heal today. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands. Why? Because he was without honor. I think there's a lot of things today that people don't get from God that he wants to give them because they don't honor him thinking that he can still do it today. And I think that's a terrible place to be in because we don't honor God enough. We don't say God is big enough. We don't say that he is the miracle worker. We don't say that God's the healer. Well, all of those things, you know, all of those things stopped in 59 AD. Where does it say that? Chapter and verse, where does it say that? Where does it say the signs, wonders, and miracles stopped? It stopped because people stopped elevating and honoring what God was doing because God was just this or God was just that. He's just the son of a carpenter. He's just the son of Mary. He could, do not, he could not do any miracles because they didn't honor him. It doesn't say he would not. It said he could not. So there's a cooperative effort in that because their lack of honor of who he was. He just healed a dead woman, a dead child, all of this stuff. Lacked honor. But here's my question to you. I wonder what miracles... God could have done for us had we believed he was capable and if we'd honored him to the place that we know that he should have been able to do it. See, what are we living without because we didn't honor God? 
because we didn't honor him to where he should be. I, I, I think sometimes we have missed it because we didn't honor him enough. We didn't put him in a place of being the king of kings, the Lord of lords, miracle worker, the healer, the one who brings prosperity in life. I don't think that we didn't honor him enough, and because of that, we suffer. Look over here in Romans chapter 12. Look what it says here. Honor one another above yourselves. See, if we want more out of people around us, we've got to honor them. Because when we honor them, they come up to that place. They come up to that place. Another version of the Bible says this, outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo each other. Try to outdo somebody else. Jeff will tell you, how many times do I let other people pick up the check when we go out to eat? I don't. Even with your dad. Your dad got mad at me one day. <laughs> Before Jeff and I got married, we were going out with his, his uh, uh, his dad and his his dad's wife, and we were we were going out to dinner. And I forget where we were at, and uh, I had already handed the the waiter my card, and I said, "Put it on one check." Well, when the bill came, Jeff's dad was reaching for his billfold, and I was already signing the check. And he said, "What?" what, what? I said, "Because that's my goal." Because I wanted to honor them as being the parents. That was his dad. I wanted to honor his dad for allowing me to have his child. We honor by doing things going above, taking care of, buying things, doing things for other people. We show them a place of being honored. Small things mean that people will grow up and they'll, they'll want to aspire to be who you think that they are. We become that. So I choose to honor them, you know. Choose to honor Pastor Kathy. Choose to honor Doug and Missy, the people that work here, and Matt. Honor them. Be nice to them. Be kind to them. Go out above and about to show them that. Mark 15 here. Matthew 15, sorry. Jesus said, these people honor me. This is what Jesus said. They honor me with their lips, but he says their hearts are far from me. They really don't believe that. They really don't believe that. You know, you can give God lip service. You can, you know, say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a born again believer. I'm a Christian and never show up to church and it never really work out. You know, people who say, well, you know, I know that big guy in the sky. No, you don't. <laughs> don't call him the big guy in the sky. Don't call him that. Don't call him your bro. Don't, no, you don't do that. He's God. You don't bring him down to your level. You let him be who he is, and you're likely to get more miracles out of your life doing that. When we honor God, we honor his people as well. The reason is, is because his name is on us. The name of God has been applied to our lives. It's important to know that. It's important to know that. I'm going to divert just for a second. Who is that? Anybody know? Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. What was he known for? What? Baseball. Baseball. Hit more home runs than any man at that point in time. And this little thing right here, his signature, he autographed hundreds of baseballs. He, he, he just signed baseballs because people wanted, would you autograph my ball? The kids would bring his ball, bring the ball. He'd be over there and he'd just sign his name, sign his name, sign his name. But he only signed seven bats. Hundreds of baseballs, but he only signed seven bats. Well, all seven of them were around, but suddenly one of them vanished. That just simply vanished and it was gone for decades. People didn't know where, a ball, where this bat was. But it resurfaced again in 2004, recently, not, not long ago. 
The bat was used to hit a home run in 1923. And uh, it had been given to a guy who was sick and he had had this bat from a little, when he was a little child and just had the bat. Well, he got sick and the nurse that had been taking care of him, she honored him and she took care of him and she didn't know anything about this bat, knew nothing about it. Finally, when he was dying, he gave this lady this bat. <laughs> She's looking at this bat going, He's giving me a baseball bat. No, that's, that's, that's a lot. Didn't mean anything to her. She stuck it under her bed. For years, it was under her bed. She had always dreamed of owning her own restaurant. Always wanted this restaurant, always wanted this restaurant. And finally, one day, she decided this man passed away. She had this baseball bat under her bed for nearly 18 years. And she said, I wonder if that bat was really worth anything. So she took that bat to a memorabilia store to have them check the validity of, of this bat and if it was real. The guy didn't think it was real because she was just really unassuming, carry this little bat in like, like it was nothing, you know. And he checked it out and the bat was real. Had his name there that he had signed on that bat. Now before I show you this, she sold the bat at auction at Sotheby's for $1.3 million. She built her restaurant and she gave the rest of the money to an orphanage that was really close to a Babe Ruth's heart to support kids that didn't have dads, didn't have families. But this is what she said about the bat. The bat was only valuable because Babe Ruth's name was on it. Since he made it valuable, the only reasonable thing I could do was something that would honor his life. The only thing that made that of any value was his name on it. The only thing that makes you and me valuable is that we have the name of God on us. And that's the reason why you honor each other. You esteem each other highly. You don't tear people down. You, wanna, you want somebody to be important in your life. You make them important. You honor them. You honor them. So in our study today, you know, what makes you important, what makes you valuable is the fact that God has sealed you with his own name. Don't let anybody ever tell you you have no value, you have no worth, you have nothing to God. You'll never make it to heaven. You're going to go to hell in a handbasket. Tell all those people, I honor you. Because God wants me to honor you. Don't tit for tat. Don't come back after them. Don't make fun of them. Pray for them. Honor them. That's our only response. True virtues are things that we're supposed to be doing for each other. These are the things that we recognize in life that have true value, true worth. And each of you have a value because the price of the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your life. That's what makes you valuable. Valuable. His name, his signature is on you. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you this morning that we have this opportunity to come together to to be reminded of the value that you have placed on our life, a value worth saving, a value worth honoring. And Father, we don't want to ever, ever devalue the life of Jesus, the blood of the, the cross, his life. We want to continue to esteem and to build up his place 
not only in this church, but in our lives. So Heavenly Father, that we can esteem him to let him be who he is. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the value of life is placed upon him that he placed upon us. Each and every one of us are important. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for that today. And Heavenly Father, we honor you this morning. And Father, I decree that every person here, every person that listens today has wealth and value to them, a worth beyond what man can conceive of, can comprehend. So Heavenly Father, we worship you today and we bless you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Pray for your pastor and his husband while we're away. And we will see you in, a, in two weeks. Two weeks, but be in church next Sunday.